Okay, in this first video I want to just address a question that I see asked very often when people start uh, animating walks. Um, and basically this is, should we animate the character in place and then move the main controller around to slide the, the walk around? Or should we animate each step moving forward? And what I mean by that, I've got this little example file here. Um, this red guy is doing a treadmill or a walk in place if you like. Um, where it's just a loop. Basically, I just animated one walk, like it's a 25 second, or, or sorry, one second, 25 frames uh, loop. Um, so that's just repeating. And then the, this main mover control then could then be moved around the scene to actually move the walks as it's, you can have it looping and just move it around like that to actually move it through space. And um, that's often called a walk in place or a treadmill walk. And it's particularly useful in situations like games because if you're animating for a game you generally want the animation to be as simple as possible so it doesn't uh, take up too much resources and you also the, generally the character would be controlled by the player so this controller here this is often called a main mover or the root mover or people have different names for it but basically this control is a parent of all the other controls so as you move it it'll move them all with it and in, in a game this will be what the, the character will actually control in fact, you'll often see that if you play a game like, like Grand Theft Auto or something like that, you actually notice that as the character slows down, the feet usually slide around the place, which doesn't look very um, realistic, really, but we kind of buy it, you know, because in, in games it sort of works. So you'd actually move this or rotate this to move the character around. So that's um, what they call a treadmill walk. And the other one then is tr is where you actually translate the character through, through the scene. In this case, this controller is actually staying where where it was originally and you'll notice the character's actually walking away from that so in this case you've actually got to walk, animate each step individually I've actually cheesed it a little bit here but we'll, we'll cover that later um, how I did that but just as kind of as an example to kind of show you visually what it looks like this is actually the, the character the, the body and the feet are actually moving away from the main controller and uh, you might ask well which, which should you do and the answer really for me anyway and you'll probably hear me using this answer a few times in this tutorial, is it depends. You know, it depends on your intended purpose. If you're going to go animate something for a game, then definitely you need to use a treadmill walk uh, because, you know, the, the the player needs to control where the actual walk takes place. Uh, it's also much more efficient. If you're animating, though, for TV, um, it depends. You know, often it'll be, it'll be a treadmill walk as well for those. Particularly if you're not going to see the character's feet, you can certainly get away with it. But for feature films, certainly on the the main characters, uh, and particularly if the character's walking over an uneven surface or something like that, they'll nearly always do this walk off the spot kind of way. Um, so it really depends on the purpose. If you read the animator's uh, survival kit, the, the book by Richard Williams, which is loads of great advice about animation, he says that you should always animate when you're starting off um, off the spot like this. And I think for for hand drawn animation that makes a lot of sense because you've got you know you can you can actually trace each foot position on top of the old one. Whereas if you're trying to slide, if you look at this guy, his feet are actually sort of sliding back as he walks. Um, you know, so that he's actually staying in the same position in the world. And then this this controller would move them around. So this kind of thing is actually pretty hard to do in um, ha traditional hand drawn animation. It certainly is done. People do do it, but it's kind of a little bit tricky to do. So that's why he recommends in that book that you that you do the other one, the, this blue guy. Um, but I think in 3D it's actually slightly easier. This this is really subjective, but it's my personal opinion. It's actually easier to do a treadmill one. Um, the other thing though is that. Depending on the kind of move you're doing and, and the needs of your scene, it might be easier to do the other one. I'll show you an example. This is a piece I animated for, um, I was on an animation course earlier this year when I animate. And if you watch this guy, um, he's actually starting in this position. And then, he's gonna, then he's gonna walk over here. The whole purpose of this shot was to animate a pace. Then he turns and he kind of stops and he, he kind of thinks, he gets annoyed because he's impatient for this cattle to boil. And then he walks back and he has another turn here. So you'll see there's a lot of stopping, starting, turning, um, and I animated this one like that blue guy, you know, it, it, for me it wouldn't have made sense to try to move this controller around. So what I did was that, that controller there, uh, I just basically positioned it here at the start of the animation. So it's, if you can imagine, it's somewhere around here. And then I just left it there and I moved the character around so it's still staying there. And, and to me, 
because his feet are visible the whole time, because his, his foot contact is kind of an important part of the shot, um, this would have been extremely difficult to do with a, tread, with a treadmill walk moving the main mover around. So that's an example of where it's really not practical to do it, so you, you would actually animate each step in turn. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to teach a treadmill walk because it, it teaches some of the technical stuff. And I actually believe it is actually a little bit easier when you're starting off, um, particularly because it's 3D, because we have the, the, the F curves where we can actually get a fairly good control over how the feet slide back and how this moves forward and so on to make sure that it, that it works cleanly, even if you are translating this around. And so I'll have a look at that next. Okay, so we know what we're going to do now. We're going to do a treadmill walk and um, just let's do a little bit of planning and setting up our scene just so it's ready to animate. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my project settings up the way it kind of suits me to work. So I'm going to press uh, Control D, which will bring up the project settings. And the first thing I want to do is set the frame rate. By default, cinema will be set to 30 frames, but I want to set it to 24 frames per second. Um, that's kind of a standard frame rate for feature films. Uh, if you're working on TV stuff, you'd probably set that to, to 25 if you're working in Europe, or 30 if you're working in the US for NTSC. Uh, but I'm going to go with 24 because it's a nice uh, kind of handy frame rate for dividing. It's kind of a traditional animation one if you like. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my first frame to be frame one. You can either you can do it here actually, or you can do it there. Um, I like to start in frame one rather than frame zero. Cinema defaults to frame zero, but frame zero doesn't really make much sense to me. I prefer to count from one. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my interpolation, my key interpolation. Um, this basically determines the kind of um, curves we'll get in the, in the timeline. And um, when I'm doing an acting shot, I generally switch this to uh, to this mode, to step, which means there's no interpolation at all. And that's kind of handy when you're blocking out the poses in, in an acting shot. But for something like this, I generally work in linear. Uh, I could work in spline as well, but I find that I, I end up fiddling with the splines when I should really be concentrating on the, the poses. So I like to start with linear, which means I'll get just really um, smooth transitions, or not smooth transitions, but um, very predictable transitions between each pose. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my last frame to 25, because it's going to be a one second loop, so um, frame 1 and frame 25 are going to be exactly the same. So that's our um, Poses. And just to mention a little bit about the rig, this this is um, a rig that came with a version of Cinema. I'm not 100% sure which one it came with, but um, it's uh, I've modified it a tiny bit just to make the foot rig suit my, the way I work a little bit more. Um, but other than that, it's, it's uh, pretty much the same as the one you get. Uh, so you're welcome to download this. This and a lot of these, you'll see these scripts and stuff up here. These are scripts I've written. Uh, only actually going to use a couple of them really for this stage anyway. Um, but you're welcome to grab all these. You can you can find these on my website at graphite9.com. Um, so the reason I'm using I'm starting off with this rig is because it's a nice simple one. I, I am going to do something else later on where we have a full character with a spine and you know a head and arms and that kind of stuff. But I think it's great to start off with something like this because it allows you to focus on the real core um, parts of a walk, which are basically the feet. And then the hips, you know, the center of gravity, if you like, for 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 the character. So it's kind of a simplified rig, really. But if, I find this a great one to start with. Um, so we're ready to start animating. Well, almost. There's one thing I think we should do first, and that's have a look at some reference. Um, it's a thing that didn't occur to me when I first started animating. I used to just, you know, go in and put some poses in and kind of wonder why it didn't work. And sometimes, you know, I kind of uh, look at other animators and wonder how they're doing it. And really, it, it, there's no magic to it, really. What, what most anima good animators do is they look at reference. And, uh, you know, it seems logical enough. If you think about, you know, somebody modeling something, they're also going to look at reference as well because, um, you know, we, we think we understand stuff, and we do understand them from our gut, but actually looking at some reference and kind of really analyzing what makes a walk work will really help you get get started in a good way. So I've got this little bit of video here. I actually use this in one of my other videos. Um, just to kind of look at the main poses. So I'm going to actually look at this guy in the red t-shirt. Um, you can see as he's walking there, he's, his legs are pretty visible and it's, his feet are quite, it's quite clear what, um, what his legs and feet are doing. So if I break it down, the first pose that's kind of important, I've actually grabbed a few of these 
as um, still images as well, so it'll be easier to get through. This one, um, if you look at books like the Animated Survival Kit, they often call this the contact pose. And basically what's important about this is that the, the heel of the front foot has just met the ground. There's actually no weight on it yet, but it's just kind of contact to the ground. And then the, the, the back foot is kind of lifting off a little bit, but it's not lifted up yet. So that's often called, I say, the contact pose. And I'm going to go to the next pose we look at. And this is often called a down pose. So um, the weight is kind of coming down the foot. The, the front foot is flat. And the knee is kind of starting to bend here. Um, but the interesting thing about this, though, that, that often people make a mistake about it, is that the, the back foot doesn't lift off straight away. It actually, it, it's still on the ground here, and it's just kind of rolling onto the toe. And then the next pose we look at is, is often called a passing pose. This is where the leg is pretty much straight, the planted leg. Uh, it's kind of in the middle of the, the stride, if you like. The other leg is kind of lifted off the ground. It's kind of swinging forward. And the next pose then is the often called the peak or the up pose. And this is one that uh, kind of confused me when I was starting off. When you look at books like the Animated Survival Kit, they really exaggerate this pose. If I could actually, uh, let me just get my uh, little drawing tool actually which is here, Annotate Pro, it's a nice little tool for drawing on your uh, windows. If, if you know, The anime survival kit would ten, tend to have the leg like this, I'm, I'm really exaggerating it, uh, for the lifted leg, um, which, you know, looks fine in sort of cartoon, but in, in CG and it's, it kind of looks a bit um, off, you know, it kind of looks a bit too, a bit too pushed, unless you're going for something really cartoony. But if you look at a fairly naturalistic walk, the heel doesn't really come off the ground very much. So even though we call this the up pose, there's not a whole lot of up to it. And the next pose then would just be the contact again. So there are four poses really, contact, down, passing, and up. And then it's going to go back, contact, down, passing, and up. And that's going to be the repeated sequence. So now we've got a kind of a better idea of what we're trying to do. So let's uh, go into cinema now and start blocking those out. And for me, and I think a lot of animators do this, they'll actually start with the contact pose because it, it kind of establishes the stride length and it kind of gets you kind of um, something kind of fairly solid that you can base the, the walk off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this foot and I'm going to push it forward a little bit. And I'm going to grab the back one and pull it back, roughly around the same amount. And then I'm going to bring the body down a little bit, just so, just so the front leg starts to bend. I don't really want, I want to keep it fairly straight, but just so that it kind of doesn't lock out completely. Uh, one thing we'll, we'll actually talk about in a little while as well is IK, how it tends to pop when the knee is almost straight. Um, there are ways to, to deal with that. The other thing that you'll find people will generally do, um, is that they'll rotate their hips, if I look from the top, in this direction to favor the forward foot. So like the, um, the foot, foot will be, uh, you know, it'll, it'll kind of stretch. Just to, It'll give the, reach, the, the leg more reach. So now the leg is bent again, so I can either bring this up a little bit or I can increase the stride length a little bit. But I think the stride length looks about right there. The other thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring this one back on its heel. So I'm going to use this um, heel lift attribute. And again, you can see that... Uh, the leg is bending now, so I'm going to push it forward a little bit. And again, I don't want to lock the knee completely, but I'm going to try and get it so it looks pretty straight. And the same with this one. Well, this one I'm actually going to use the ball lift. And again, you'll see the leg will kind of... Um, I'm not going to go too far with that, because I'm going to actually going to push it further in the down pose. I'm going to bring it back a little bit like that. So something like that. I'm going to... I have this little um, icon here. or little, This is uh, like a selection. If I double-click that, it'll select the three controllers I want. And I'm going to make sure position and rotation is set to record and I'm going to just record a key and that's recorded a keyframe here I'm going to record the same key then at frame 25 because I know I want that to loop so I know I want that key to be exactly the same then I'm going to go exactly halfway through which is frame 13 and I want to mirror that pose and you can do this by eye or you can you know go into the graph editor and start doing it but I'm a big believer in uh, you know if you can get the computer to do something automatic for you you know, or through scripting or something like that, you know, leave it to the math, then it's going to save you time. So I've got this little script I've written here called Walk Cycle Buddy, and you can kind of, you can grab that off my website. So I'm just going to select this foot controller and this one. I'm going to click that, and it swaps the poses. So it's, uh, it's swapped all these attributes as well. It's kind of, um, it's a little Python script I wrote that just makes that a lot easier to set up. The other thing that we need to do, obviously, is we need to mirror this pose. So I've got another script here, which is uh, which will mirror the spine pose. So if I, if I click that, 
you'll see it flips that. So now I've got an exact mirror image of the first pose by jump between it. You'll see that. And if I press play now, we've got, you know, not necessarily something that looks like a walk, but maybe it looks like he's kind of skiing, you know, or something like that. But we've got sort of the tent pole poses, if you like. So then I'm going to start, these would often sometimes be called the key poses. I'm going to start putting in what they often call breakdown poses. Uh, I, did, I mentioned this in the other video as well, that key poses are, are uh, you know, kind of describe what happens, and breakdown poses describe how, how it happens. So so this is going to be basically the passing pose. So look, remembering from my reference, I know a few things about this. I know I want, I'm going to put on auto key now, so that as I make changes here, that it'll automatically be recorded. So I'm going to just, um, I'm going to zero everything out, basically. I'm going to zero out the ball lift and the heel lift. I'm going to do the same for the other foot as well, because I want those to be zeroed out as well, even though that foot's going to be off the ground. And then I'm going to pull the uh, the body controller up a little bit, so that the uh, planted leg is pretty much straight. Again, I'm going to avoid locking it completely. And um, if I look at the animation, it's the back foot that's coming forward at this stage. So I'm just going to lift it off the ground a little bit, and I'm going to tilt it a little bit like that as well. And uh, a little bit like this as well, just make it a little bit more natural. And I might actually even push it out just a tiny bit in X, just so it's not in exactly the same position. So now we've got our, uh, our passing pose. And um, the other thing that happens with the passing pose as well is that the, the body weight will generally shift over a little bit, over the planted foot. You know, the body has to kind of support itself under the, the foot. So I'm going to push the this body mass over a little bit so it's kind of a little bit more balanced over the planted foot. So we've got this kind of thing. And now obviously I need to mirror that pose over to the other side. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure I key all. Uh, where are we? Key out like that. And then I'm going to go to frame 19. The handy thing you can do actually is just, if you hold Alt, you can drag and it'll, uh, the timeline will drag, but it won't update the animation. So it means I can copy that pose over here to frame 19 by recording again. So now I've got the same pose on frame 19. And now I can just use those scripts again just to mirror it, because obviously I wanted this to be the opposite pose. So again, I'm going to use the walk cycle body one to mirror the foot pose, and then this spine one to mirror the spine pose. So now we're getting something that looks a little bit more like a walk, but still not too natural. So what we need to do now is go in and break this down further. We've got sort of, um, you know, you can call these a primary breakdown. So now we're going to put down the next ones. So the next one I'm going to put down is going to be on frame four. It's going to be basically halfway between the uh, contact and the uh, passing pose. And this is going to be the down pose. And uh, basically the front foot is going to be zeroed out again because the uh, you know the foot's going to be flat on the ground. The weights come down it. The uh, the body mass is going to be is going to actually drop down a little bit. So you can see that a little bit, a little bit of a, a down downward movement there, just to kind of um, make sure that leg stays flat. I'm, I'm kind of I'm going to exaggerate a little bit in this tutorial. I'm going to try and keep the, the walk very naturalistic, but uh, I'm going to going to exaggerate a little bit as well, so that um, so that it's kind of nice and easy to see what I'm doing. The other thing, though, as, as I mentioned in when we're looking at the reference, the, the foot here, you know, with the interpolation, it's just coming straight off the ground, which isn't actually right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just, just going to grab that foot, and I'm going to use that same trick again. I'm going to press Alt, and then click on frame 4, and I'm going to copy it. And that means I've now got the exact same pose on frame 4 that I had on frame 1. And it just gives me a starting point for the next pose that's actually better than, than what it would have given me with the, with just with the interpolation. And what I want basically to happen is I want this foot to travel back the same amount as the other one, because you know if I if, if we're imagining that the characters on a treadmill, you know both feet are going to be affected by the treadmill the same amount. So there's a few ways you can do this. You can kind of go in and do it with uh, with math and stuff like that. But I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into a side view where it's a little bit easier to see. And uh, what I sometimes do is I use that little drawing tool again, this little annotate pro thing. Um, you can use a doodle tool as well, but what I really like about this is that I can actually just make a mark here. I'm going to make a mark. Oops, I'm going to clear the one I had there already. I'm going to make a little mark here. Uh, actually, I was going to grab that out of the way. That, that's actually what I really like about this. You can actually just you can move those points around and and hide them. So I'm going to grab my my pen here and just make a little mark here. So I'm kind of marking where the uh, the front foot is, and then I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to frame 4, and I'm going to put another mark in there. 
So basically what I'm doing is I'm working out how long or how far that is traveling over those few frames. So I can make a little, another mark here then to figure out the length of it. So that's how much the front foot has moved during those few frames. So basically all I need to do is just make sure the back foot moves by the same amount. So this is what I did really like about this annotate pro thing. It's it's twenty dollars actually, it's, I highly recommend you get it actually. Um it's a really, really useful tool. It was actually Keith Lango, one of his tutorials, he mentioned this and he said it's one of the best twenty dollars you can spend as an animator and I, I think he's he's totally right. It's 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 a great tool for this kind of stuff and for lots of other things as well that we'll see later. Um so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I've moved it over there so I can kind of measure this one and I'm just going to bring that back the same amount so it doesn't have to be perfect right I'm going to finesse this in the uh, in, in the graph editor later on but um that's that's pretty much right there the other thing I'm going to do though obviously you can see the leg is really stretching out there I'm going to increase the ball lift so he's kind of coming right onto his ball I'm actually might even give it a tiny bit of toe lift as well in fact, now that I look at this, I actually feel that the stride length might be a little bit too long. So I'm actually going to bring the, the front foot back here in this pose. And I'm going to make sure that I have to update that. So I'm going to go to frame 25 and keyframe that as well. And I'm going to do my little trick again of going to this frame, copying it, and then mirroring it again. Just so that I've kind of altered that pose a little bit. And now I'm going to do it again. So I've got my back foot toe lift. And what I can do is even bring this down a little bit more so the, the leg kind of starts bending like that. Something like that. Um, what I'm going to do is I kind of block things in pretty loosely first and then we're going to kind of finesse them uh, in the graph editor as we go along or in the F curves. So I can actually increase the ball lift there as well. Something like that will do the job for the moment. So that's our down pose. I'm going to hide these guys again for the moment and um, again we need to just mirror that pose so I'm gonna do a key all I'm gonna select all of these and then record a key um, and then I'm going to copy that pose so I'm gonna again I'm gonna alt and click on uh, frame 16 this time and I'm gonna record that pose again and then I'm gonna mirror it so I'm gonna grab these two and mirror with that script and this one and mirror with that script so now we've got our up or we've sorry we've got our look at contact our down our, our passing pose is blocked in so it's just one more pose we need to do now it the next one is the peak pose and we've almost got it really the interpolation is giving us pretty much close to what it is but what I want to do is I want to push it a little bit more so I'm going to actually bring this up a little bit and I'm going to zero, I'm actually going to zero this out a little bit and push it forward a little bit more. I'm going to make it basically more like the uh, the front one like that, so it's kind of swinging through like that. I might even tilt it up a little bit, something like that. I might even push it forward a little bit more, so it's kind of swinging forward towards, again, I don't want to lock the knee completely, but something like that. And um, that, that's, that's going to work pretty well. So again, I'm going to select all with this and key. I'm going to go to frame 22. Uh, again, I'm holding Alt so it doesn't update. I'm recording key again. And again, I'm going to mirror those poses. So I'm going to mirror the feet and I'm just going to select this and mirror the spine. So now you've got our basic poses. It doesn't look particularly great yet. We've got to do you know a bit more work to make it look natural and sort of get into the keyframes and you know in the in the F curves and sort of polish things to make it work nice and cleanly. But the basics are there. One thing you might notice, it might come across in the in the screen capture because of the frame rate. But um, one thing that's kind of important is to make sure when you're playing it back that you switch off the last frame or hide it for a moment just so you can see the loop playing cleanly. Otherwise you're gonna actually see the same frame twice. So it's gonna look like there's a pause in it. So we have the basics there. One thing, though, that 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 you'll find, and uh, depending on the, on the type of walk as well, is that the the uh, the middle the the hips will tend to 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 pil tilt as well as they, particularly as the foot lifts off. So kind of around the the, the down pose. I'm just gonna make my uh, rotate gizmo a little bit bigger so I can uh, get that. So I'm gonna 
tilt it a little bit on the down pose. If you were animating a f something a, a female walk, you'd, you'd push that a bit more. So we've got kind of a little bit more of a of a change there. And it kind of shows the weight coming down on, onto the front foot. So, so this leg, this this left leg is actually taking the weight, and this leg, it, the the weight is kind of coming off the back foot at this point. So again, I want to mirror that pose to frame 16. So I'm going to again hold Alt and just click on that, record the key, and then mirror it. So now I got the same pose on the other side. And it's a good thing as well to do is to, to look at your animation from different angles as you're working. You know, sometimes things will look okay in one angle and you look at them from another point of view and they don't look right. Like generally, you know, when you're rendering a final animation, you're only going to see it from one view. But it's a good idea to kind of make sure things make sense pretty much in 3D. So that's a basic poses blocked in now. In the next video, I'm going to kind of go through and kind of finesse this. I'm going to start splining some of the controllers so it's a little bit more obvious, um, you know, how things will work. And we'll start smoothing things out. You'll notice that the knees are popping and stuff like that as they land. We'll, we'll go in and kind of fix that stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to start um, kind of polishing and detailing this animation. Um, in part, I'll be I'll be adding extra keys to certain controllers, and in part, I'll be working with the uh, graph editor, the F curve editor. Um, I'm going to open that. You can go probably a little bit outside the screen capture area here, but I'm going to go up to the top menu. And this, there's a menu called Window. I'm going to select from that the timeline, or you can use the hotkey here, Shift F3. And that'll bring up the, the timeline. It has two different modes. You can um, toggle between them by pressing space. The key mode is where you actually see the actual keys, and the F curve mode is going to be the one we're going to be working mostly in. And uh, one thing I should preface this uh, section of the video with is just a comment that I, I would advise if you're kind of following along with this tutorial, um, you know, if, if you're following the steps with, with uh, you know, maybe with this rig or with another rig, I would recommend that rather than doing that for this section, that you just kind of watch this part and maybe watch it a couple of times to see what I do because. Um, this isn't going to be really a section where it's kind of, you know, do step A, followed by step B, followed by step C. You're actually going to see me probably go back and forward a couple of times between some aspects and maybe reworking stuff. And that's typically the way I work. And I've seen other animators work as well. That, I, I think it's it's not that unusual. Um, I, I tend to be fairly um, organized, I suppose, a way to put it, when I'm blocking. But once I go into polish, for me, it's more like... Um, it's almost like a sculpting kind of process um, where you're kind of you keep looking at it from different angles and seeing new things you want to fix and you just kind of pick the thing that, that sticks out to you most to fix first and then you might end up changing that a little bit again when you've changed something else because everything kind of affects everything else so I'm not saying my workflow is disorganized but it, it does tend to be kind of an iterative uh, process so so I recommend just kind of watching this video and kind of um, getting a sense of how I do it and maybe trying some of these techniques yourself rather than actually following every step verbatim, you know. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set up the timeline the way I, I work. Uh, I usually have a couple of these options on. This one here is show only animated elements. I like to have that on so I don't see any other objects that aren't animated. I also usually stick this one on, the show automatically all project elements. So you stick that on. And the other one I stick on is lick uh, link timeline to object manager and that means that as I select objects in the actually it was already on apparently uh, as I select objects in the scene you'll see that they come up in the timeline here I'm going to give myself a bit more uh, room by dragging this over so I can kind of see the names of the controllers and um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start splining the uh, body controller because that's, uh, if I press play, that, that's linear at the moment, so we're getting a fairly hard hit on either side. And if I look at the curves, you can actually see, if I press the, go to the position X one here, if I select them all and press S, it'll kind of frame up on that. And you can kind of see why it looks so mechanical, because the curve is just kind of hitting, kind of dunk, and then another one here, bunk, and back again. So it's a very hard transition, you know, there's no, um, what they call ease in or out, in traditional animation terms. One thing I like to do as well, I'm doing this, I'm actually going to do it for all the controllers. I'm going to double, I'm going to double click on this selection object again to select them all. What I tend to do is I select them like that and I right click and go set to the before after to repeat before. 
and the after behavior to repeat after. I also, um, there's, there's an option now in R13 called repetitions, which I actually don't like. I wish this was just defaulted to infinity as it used to do, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up to like something really high, like 111 or something. That's, um, be, just so that it'll keep looping. So if I extend the timeline, just to show you if I give this more frames, the animation will keep cycling. It'll keep looping. The other reason I do it is so that I can sort of see how the curves look. If I zoom out now, if I select, it's pretty hard to see when I've got everything selected. But if I just select one key, say, you can actually see this kind of black line. That's kind of showing how the uh, the curve is, is translating into the next one. And you'll, that's kind of important when I start splining it. So if I grab these keys and just select this option here, spline, you can actually see that the uh, the curves end up a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to start cleaning them up. There's a few ways you can do it, but I'm just going to, I'm going to hit this um, auto tangent um, function, which sort of works, but you'll notice that for, if you look at the, the, you can see it really clearly when you look at these curves. You can see this kind of kink in the curve as it as it kind of joins again. That's because the last curve here is is the last key is flat. So what I usually do is I select the first one and the last one, and I grab this handle and I angle them. It'll do both of them that, that way, and I just try and make sure that it's getting kind of a smoother path through that curve. The other thing I usually do, um, if you'll notice, it's kind of hitting, if I look at the viewport here, it's kind of going to make that uh, uh, widget a bit smaller for the move tool. But you notice as it gets to each one, it kind of, it's a very linear transition. Even though I've splined the curve, there's a little bit of softness there. It's still kind of a fairly mechanical thing. What I like to do is actually um, make these keys and these keys a little bit more like this one, and there's a few ways you can do that. But I've actually I've got this little script again called Scale Keys, which you can find on my website again. I'm going to hold, I'm going to select those ones, and I'm going to hold Control. Uh, actually, I'm going to hold Shift, which will go the opposite way. Uh, sorry, that is Control actually, and I'm pressing it a few times. And basically, what it's doing is it's it's increasing that value, so it's making those keys. I'm going to, again, I'm going to tweak this curve now to kind of clean it up a little bit. So it's making these ones a little bit more like that. So it means it's going to kind of go out to that position a little bit earlier, kind of hold that, and then kind of come back. I'm just going to go through the middle, I'm going to just adjust this tangent and make it nice and clean. So it's a pretty subtle difference, but it means that rather than just kind of going out and back in a very mechanical way, it's kind of favouring this key, it's kind of going out, staying here in this area, going back through this part quickly, and then coming back, and that kind of shows inertia. You know, in, in real life, we, don't, we never actually kind of hit something and come back, unless there's something physical that we, we uh, interact with, like a wall or, or the ground or something, but normally, you know, it, we've got inertia working on us, so we can't just kind of go over here and, b and come back straight away. We've got to kind of, we, we go out, and then we kind, of, we kind of accelerate, and then decelerate, and then come back. So it's kind of more like this, more like a sort of a sine wave. So that's going to, going to say that's kind of okay for the moment. Then I'm going to start looking at the Y curve. So this is the uh, the up and down of the body. And again, this is all linear for the moment. So again, I'm going to select all these curves and I'm going to press spline. And I'm going to make them auto tangent. And you can see the auto tangent, again, kind of messes them up a little bit. So I'm going to select the, these ones and smoothen that out. I'm going to select, you notice I'm often, wherever I can, I'm going to select the two of them. That are kind of mirrored poses. Just and I'm going to round this one off. I'm going to leave it overshoot a little bit. You know, I, it's, I don't think a two. I don't think a little bit of overshoot is a bad thing. You, you don't want a whole lot, but um, you don't want it to look totally mechanical either. So I'm going to soften that a little bit. So I'm kind of getting a smoother up and down now. I might also kind of just flatten these out a little bit, so not getting too much overshoot there. The Z curve, there's actually no animation on that. There's no forward and backwards in this walk, so I'm going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to look at the rotation of this curve. So the heading, again, you can see the same sort of thing. It's it's just very mechanical, um, you know, hitting either extreme. So again, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to spline that. I'm going to set them to auto tangents. And then I'm going to grab these ones and these ones and hold control and use my scale keys tool, which just brings them up a little bit. You can do that manually, of course. So I'm kind of doing the same thing I did with the X translation. I'm, I'm, it's going to kind of favor. You can see it's kind of staying more in, in the kind of 
twisted pose, and they're kind of, kind of going quickly through the uh, the kind of inter intermediate pose. And again, that's a little bit more natural looking. I'm going to do the same thing as well with the banking. You can see if I look at this curve, this one actually is, if I uh, select them all and press S and frame up, and you can see there that one, the, um, the curve is very kind of pointy looking, which kind of shows you, you can see sort of, as if I scrub through it there, you can see it goes down and it comes back up very quickly to the straight pose. So I'm actually going to take that one and bring it down a little bit so that it doesn't kind of just kind of snap back from that. I'm going to bring it down to this line and I'm going to do this, the opposite then with this one. And that kind of thing. And I might even just delete this key and this one and then um, spline these and see what I get. Again, I'm going to auto-tangent them. And then I'm going to, again, I've got, you see the curve, if I lean out, if I zoom out there, you can see that's going to look really kind of noisy and messy. So I'm going to grab this curve and this one and kind of flatten them out. And I might even push, same sort of idea again, I might just grab these two keys and scale them up a little bit. So that it's again kind of a softer transition. So we're getting quite cartoony now with the, with the motion, but I think that's okay for this purpose, you know, because I want to I want to sort of show, you know, the principles in, in action. So you can see as it goes down now, it's kind of coming into this. It's kind of keeping the, uh, the body kind of tilted a little bit, and then just as it kind of reaches into the the contact pose, that's where it straightens up, and then the same sort of thing here. So I'm going to clean the curve a little bit more. It's still looking a little bit messy. So something like that. Still not super clean, but it should do the job. I might actually grab this one and this one as well and just kind of round them off a little bit. And usually end up having to adjust the one just after it as well to kind of kind of smooth things out a little bit. Something like that. I'm trying to get fairly nice kind of clean curves, but it's it's also important to keep one eye on the on the viewport as well because sometimes you will end up with curves that don't look particularly clean, but the animation will look okay and and to me that's okay you know if if the curves look if the animation looks good, that's really the important thing you know generally the curves looking smooth here will give you a good indication that things are gonna work right but um one thing i'm I'm sort of trying to feel now looking at this that I think the uh the Y is a little bit too much. It's kind of bouncing up and down. So this is again another thing you can kind of finesse quite quickly in the curves. So the other thing as well you'll notice if I zoom in, sometimes the curves will look okay from a distance. Like that looks kind of relatively okay. But but if you zoom out a bit, they kind of look a little bit messy. So I'm going to grab this one. You see the tangents have kind of gotten longer there. So I'm going to smoothen that one out. Same thing here. Same sort of thing here. So I'm just going to get them a little bit nicer, and the, the down pose then is the are these two. This is where it's coming down, and obviously I think that's far too much. So I'm going to grab that and bring it back up again. And that's one thing I really like about the, the the curve editor. You can very quickly make pretty broad changes. So now we've kind of got very little up and down. I could probably bring that back a little bit. I don't want to make it too kind of flat. Something like that, that's not too bad. I'm probably going to end up finessing this as well after I've worked on the feet. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm going to look at the feet for a little bit now. So one of the things I mentioned earlier is that we need to have the feet translating back. It's from, from where they're in contact with the ground, if I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I want them to come back the same amount, basically a steady amount. So these I'm actually not going to spline a se some sections of them. I'm going to look at the position Z which is the one coming back here. And you can see, it looks like I got it fairly accurate. If you look at this curve, this line here, it's pretty straight. But what I often do, just to get this really clean, is just actually, whoops, um, just grab these ones and just delete them. And now you can see the line is completely straight. So that means now I'm getting completely uh, linear. It's There's no acceleration or deceleration there as it goes back. So it's going to be a nice clean. And that's going to be really important when we start moving this mover forward to translate the character to space. That'll that'll avoid the feet slipping. We need to make sure that this curve is, is completely clean like that. This part of the curve though, I can spline it. So I'm going to grab these ones and spline them. And actually this one as well, and spline that. So I'm getting a little bit of um, acceleration 
deceleration into this. You can see the last curve is really funky looking, so I'm going to clean that up. I'm actually probably going to add another key or two. I'll probably add a key here and here just to really finesse this. I, that's my preferred method rather than kind of really tweaking the curves. I will go in and add a key or two to kind of control it. But that's not a bad starting point now. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. If we have a look at this one. This one's a little bit more tricky, but there's, there's an easy way to get around it. If you look at the curve here, it's actually, this is the, um, this frame 13 is where it, it contacts the ground and it's sliding back. But it doesn't finish its curve until here, if you like. So we need to make sure this one, you know, this, like we did with the other one, we need to make sure that we've got this nice kind of clean transition. So we need to make sure there's no acceleration or deceleration there. It looks pretty clean. And what I could do is just kind of blow these away. But I want to make sure it's 100% it's, it's linear. So a uh, simple trick to do that I like to do is just to grab this key, hold Control and Shift, and just drag it over here on to, to where it was on top of the other one. Uh, so this looks a bit strange right now, but it means now I can just actually delete this key. And now I've got a completely linear path. And what I'll do then is I'll go to frame 25, and I'll just key it again. So now I put that key back in. Now I can delete this so delete this again. And now I know I actually can delete this one as well. I'm now I'm gonna copy this one back. So now I've got a completely linear transition. I might actually go and redo that because I probably did that quite quickly. So just to show you what I'm trying to do here. So I've got this curve that's going from here to here. You can say there's kind of a virtual key there, and then this one it may be right, you know, I could probably finesse it, adjust it a little bit like this, but a quick way to do it for me is just actually to take this key and just copy it. You can even, you know, grab both of these and copy them both, but I'm going to just grab this one. I'm holding Control and Shift. Control will, will, will copy it, and Shift will mean that as I drag sideways, it, the value won't change. So I'm going to drag it to that same, to that right key, and then I'm going to frame 28, and then I'm going to delete this, this one. And I'm also going to delete this one. And now I've got, you can see now, if you look, if I zoom out, I've got that, that clean curve I wanted. But I want to have keys on frame 25 and on frame 1 so I can kind of control it. So I'm going to keyframe here, and then I'm just going to copy that one. But doing the same thing, control, shift, and drag back. And then finally, I can just delete this extra one. So all that means, I've, got, I've, I've ended up with the same kind of curve. It was just a little bit more difficult for this foot because it's going over the end of the cycle, if you like. It's going, you know, past this part and into the next part. So I hope that makes sense. It, you know, watch that part of the video again, maybe if you have any trouble figuring that out. But yeah, I'll probably end up doing it again on some other controllers to illustrate it later. So again, I'm going to grab this part of the curve. This is where the foot is off the ground and coming back to the front position. And I'm going to spline that section of it. And again, you can see it's kind of, it makes a little bit of a mess of the curve. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to zoom in again to kind of finesse this a little bit. Grab this one and grab this one. Something like that. Again, I'm not spending too much time in that because I know I'm going to actually add a key or two in there to kind of really finesse it. And I'm going to look at the, the position Y as well at the feet. I've been focusing on uh, position Z so far. I'm actually going to save incremental as well, just in case. <laughs> you never know. Um, do, 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 there we go. I don't know why the timeline closed there. There we go. Um, so I'm going to look at the, the, the Y position now as well. So if I grab these keys and uh, press S to frame up on them. You can see that most of them are just flat on the ground, they're linear keys, and that's fine because you know I want the foot to look like it's on a hard surface, so I don't want it to be changing height at all through this section while it's sliding back along the ground. I want it to be zero the whole time. But this part of the curve, I want it to be splined. So I'm gonna grab these guys and make them splined. And you can see what's happened to this one doesn't look too bad, and this one's not too bad. I can polish this one up. Maybe by doing this, I'm maybe making this a little bit shorter. Um, but you can see we have an obvious problem here. If, if I look at the actual, if you watch the foot as it goes past that key, so if I zoom in like this, you can see it's actually going to go through the floor a little bit, just for those few keys there, just for that key really. But that's because of the overshoot of the curve. But I don't want this to be linear. I don't want it to be like that. So what I can do is I can actually break, either break the tangent or I can make just, just this one linear and then I can still have, a, I still have a tangent here to do that. The other way I could do it, just to show you, is actually to break the, t the tangents, 
is this option here is how to break tensions and that means now I can adjust this one individually and flatten this one out so both of those will work you can either make it linear and just have just adjust this one or else you can kind of keep it spline but break the tangents something like that I'm going to keep this one fairly hard. The thing is, you don't want to really slow into the, the contact because, you know, when we're, when we're affected by gravity, our feet aren't going to kind of gradually hit the ground. They're going to hit it and then pretty hard and stop. You want maybe a little bit of easing here on the lift up because, again, the foot is affected by gravity, so it's going to, um, you know, it's going to lift off a little bit more slowly than it's going to, than it's, that'll put down. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other leg. I'm going to fix the Y curve on that one. So click the Y. So again, it's just going to be these keys. I'm going to spline. And actually I might make this one linear again. And make it shorter. Something like that. And work fine. I can actually make it like that. And again, this one I'm going to smoothen it a little bit. And this one. Something like that. that that's enough for a starting point. I'm going to finesse that again in a minute by adding more keys. I've also got some rotation on this foot as it comes forward. You'll see it's just um, this is where it's kind of in midair. Obviously, it doesn't rotate when it's on the ground, but just, just this little bit here, you can see, just to keep it a bit more natural, you know, I've got this, um, or I've got rotation P along the x-axis here, but I've also got a little bit of rotation in, in B and in H. You know, I've got a kind of angle this way. You can see those curves changing as I do that. So I'm going to soften those again by just splining those. And again, I'm going to do some cleanup on them. You can see this one looks really bad. And this one, basically, the tension is too long there. So something like that. And again, this one, same sort of thing. Again, the tension is really long there. It's not going to work. I'm going to soften this up. Again, with this one. And the same thing then with the... Uh, Rotation B, and I actually press S with these ones selected just so I can kind of really see these. So again, I'm going to shorten that, smooth this out. So you're, you're trying to just get sort of a nice looking curve generally, but again, you say you don't want to get too focused on the curves. You want to kind of look at, keep your eye on the viewport as well while you're doing that. So that means that it, it, it's going to stay flat, and then as it comes off the ground, then it's going to, it's quite subtle, the rotation there, but it helps make it a little bit more organic looking. Something like that. So I'm going to do the same with the other foot. So again, let's have a look at the curves. So they're going to be over this side for this this part. So again, I'm going to spline those. I'm going to make the last one linear. And uh, again, I'm going to press S with those selected to frame up a little bit. And then like that. Smoothen these out a little bit. Because you just want uh, the animation to kind of flow through these curves in a sort of organic way. And that's generally going to reflect in the animation. It's going to look more organic. What we're trying to do is get rid of the uh, kind of mechanical sort of feel you get with the linear curves. So again, I'm going to make this one linear, but flatten this one out a bit. Flatten this. This one. And the last one, the, the B again. So again, fine. And just to make the last one linear, or you could break the tangent. And again, make this a little bit smoother looking. Start this one and this one. So it might not be too obvious with the uh, with this, the frame rate of the screen capture, but animation starting to look a bit more organic now, a little bit more natural. A couple of things are now that I'm kind of looking at. One one is that I would like the uh, the feet to be a little bit closer together because they're um, they're quite spread apart. Like when, normally when we get a character rig in the T-pose, the feet are kind of in this wide stance, but it's not that natural. You know, generally we walk with our feet a little bit on, more uh, in, you know, sort of underneath the center of gravity. And, uh, you know, I could go in and adjust each pose, but, but this is one of the things that the, that's great in the curve editor as well. You can, um, if I grab the position X, which I haven't actually adjusted yet, so it's a good time to do it now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these ones. These are the ones uh, that are where it's on the ground. So I'm going to just looking. At, I'm going to look at it from the front here. I'm going to drag these down. And you can see as I drag them down, it's updating the viewport there. If I frame out a little bit, it's a little bit more not obvious. So I'm going to bring it down to say about minus 10. And what I can do is you can even actually do these this numerically. If you've got a value that looks good on one side and you want to mirror it. 
you can see it's around 10 there. It's kind of hard to get exactly what you want. What you can do is actually just put in the value there. So minus 10. And then I can go to this one and do, pick the same keys. So pick these ones in this case. I'm going to make those plus 10. And you can see now those have brought that in. So that's a little bit more natural. I'm, I'm finding that this might be a little bit too much now. So what I might do is actually drag this back a little bit as well, say something like that. Let's have a look at that. Yeah. I don't want it swinging out too much. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe bring this down to the zero line. Yeah, that feels good to me. So I'll do the same with the other side. So I'll grab these down and mix, bring this one down to the zero line, pretty much. Yeah, so that's good. So again, I'm going to spline this bit because again, once it's off the ground, I want it to be sort of, you know, sort of smooth motion. So I'm going to stretch this one out. Going to fix this one, smoothen this off, and the same thing with the other side. Position X. So again, spline these guys, make the last one linear. Smoothen that, smooth that out. And this one. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, but one thing I'm noticing now is that the, um, the, the the spacing, this is an animation term people talk about a lot. Um, uh, spacing, I, I covered this in the, in the other video I made for Maxon last year, actually. Um, but basically, spacing refers to how much something moves over a few frames. You know, like, it, the, the distance it moves for a particular frame. Generally, you don't want it to be completely even. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another couple of keys to the to the front of the stride and the back of the stride, particularly where it comes off the ground and where it lands on the ground. So if you look at this foot, if you look at it here, I'm actually going to bring up my little drawing tool again, the Annotate Pro uh, tool, which I have here. This will help me kind of illustrate this a little bit better. I'm just going to go into a uh, side view. I'm just going to hide the timeline for a second. If we look at this um, back foot here, you can see from frame 13 it's on the ground, and then it's, it keeps going from to fi frame 15. That's our um, our down pose, and then it kind of comes up. There's a big change. If I actually just draw a little kind of kind of mark of where the foot is on that frame, you can see there's a big change from that frame to the next frame, and then you know, it kind of continues in a fairly linear way from there. And that's not really natural, but, you know, our, our bodies and stuff will, will always kind of do the least amount of work that's required. It's got, that's why it's kind of easy to trip on the pavement, you know, because a lot of times we're actually, we don't lift our feet up very high. And the other thing, we've got gravity and inertia and weight and stuff like that affecting it. So the foot is actually not going to come off the ground that suddenly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another keyframe here in frame 17. And I'm actually going to use another little tool I've written, um, uh, my animation tools. Uh, this is my nudge tool, so it's part of the nudge tool. So basically what it does is it allows me to make the, this key a little bit more like the previous one. So if I press this, you'll see now it's actually given me, it's actually pushed it back. So now I'm getting kind of a narrower spacing. So this key is actually more like the other one. And then it's going to come through here. But the other thing I want to do is I want to get a sense that um, you've kind of pushed off with the toe, which I'm not really feeling right now. So I'm just going to bring the foot up a little bit. I'm going to angle it back and I'm going to adjust the, uh, I'm going to use a toe wriggle just to kind of um, give the idea that the, I might even do a little bit of this sort of manually as well. Something like that. So you get the idea that the, uh, the toe is kind of pushing off the ground like that. You can even have it intersect slightly. I, I find that, you know, if it's intersecting a little bit, it, it doesn't really show too much most of the time. Something like that. Now, looking at this key, actually, I might bring it up a little bit as well, just so it's a little bit more organic looking and it's not hitting the ground too much. So I'm kind of adjusting this one now. The other thing I might do is actually add a little bit of that toe wriggle as well to this pose, just to kind of show the foot dragging. I'm actually going to go to um, a shaded view so it'll be easier to see that. So you can see there, just to kind of give it a little bit more of an organic sort of feel. So I'm trying to get the idea that the, you feel that the toe is kind of pushing off the ground. 
So you see the spacing now between these two keys, between 16 and 17, is, is kind of tight, it's kind of narrow. You're not seeing a big change between those two poses. And then you're seeing a much bigger change between these ones. I'm going to try and get the same sort of thing then with the front one. Um, it's actually not too bad, but look at the spacing here. It's pretty close already. But I'm actually going to add another key on frame 25. And I'm going to nudge it a little bit, just a tiny bit towards that. And I might even bring it up a tiny bit. Whoops. Something like that. That'll help fix it, the knee pop a little bit like that. That looks a bit better. So basically what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to make the, t the spacing quite narrow on this end of it. We still might get a little bit of knee pop on the pose just after this, but we'll look at ways we can fix that in a, while, in a moment. So something like that. I'm kind of look, just scrubbing back and forward here, kind of looking at the spacing. You can also use the kind of the drawing tool again to to kind of um, finesse that if you like, but I can see it pretty well there anyway without that. So I'm going to do the same with the other foot now. So um, this one it comes off the ground on frame 5 something like that. So again, I could I could go through that same process or I could just do what I did earlier. I could I could copy them and paste, paste the keys from the other pose. So I'm going to do that again just to save time. So I'm going to go to this frame. And I know I want I, I want this frame 20. Or sorry, where is it? Uh, this frame 17 rather. So I'm going to actually keyframe both of the feet there. Something like that. And I'm going to copy that pose then back this pose 17 by alt clicking or by alt holding alt and then clicking on frame 5 I'm going to copy that pose there and then I'm going to use my tool again to to mirror those poses so now I know I've got exactly the same pose there kind of a mirrored version of it on frames so I've got the same spacing on both so that's looking pretty good and um, now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the uh, the foot coming into the contact pose. So as this foot comes forward here in frame 12, I want it to be quite like, you can see that the knee is completely straight. I don't want it to be completely straight because it's going to pop. So I'm going to take the pose that I had with these two on frame 24. I'm going to key them there. And then I'm going to alt click on frame 12 and key them there. And then swap them again with the script. So now I've got some fairly clean looking curves there and I'm going to look at I adjusted one other pose there as well I adjusted this one in frame 19 so I'm going to do the same thing with that as well I'm going to grab select both of these and I'm going to key them on frame the equivalent of this pose will, will be frame 7 so I'm going to go to frame alt click on frame 7 key them both and then swap them again so now I know I've got that little foot wriggle thing I did on the other pose on this one as well So we're starting to get there now. Um, some of what I've done now, though, will have undone what I did with the uh, the graph editor. This is what I was saying earlier about sometimes you kind of work back and forward a little bit. So I'm going to have a look at the feet now again just to check things are still working the way I want. The main key I'm going to, or curve I'm going to be concerned with really is the Z one. So I've got these extra keys in now that I've added. I don't need these ones. You'll notice if I look at this curve, and uh, this section of the curve here, that we, this looks really funky. You could clean this up, but really it doesn't actually matter because there's only one frame there, 16 to 17. So this interpolation isn't going to be counted really when you render. You're not going to see that. So, you know, you can clean it up if you want to kind of keep things neat looking, but it's really not going to affect the animation at all because there is no interpolation between those two keys. And again, these guys could probably do with being uh, splined. And this one, let's blind that. And you can see now that's looking fairly organic. And again, I've got the same sort of thing here. If I frame in on these guys, this looks funky, but I'm not going to touch it because there's, there's only one key there, so there's no interpolation there. So I'm going to check the same thing on the other side. Again, say the Z one is the one I'm most kind of concerned with. And again, I've got these extra couple of keys I've added in, so I don't need these ones. I can delete those. And same sort of thing here. I'm going to spline this bit just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Something like that. So you can see what's happening now. The, the feet are kind of 
picking up and and landing kind of quicker or sorry slower than they are than they're going through the middle and that's kind of natural really you know our feet don't stay off the ground as long as they stay on the ground generally unless you've got a really bouncy walk and uh, i'm still looking at the x <laughs> translation and it, it still looks too big to me so i'm gonna look i'm gonna go adjust that again a little bit if i look at it here frame in on these guys it's basically this this curve here if I, if I scrub a little bit you can see as it comes to that one that's way too wide not sure how that happened actually but let's just fix it here in the curves so bring this one down to zero again and the same thing here the x1 it's going to be over this side yeah it's really really big that's something what can ha that can happen sometimes when you're working in, in a particular view and you're kind of not looking at the other one sometimes you can easily end up with uh, some weirdness that's why it's important to kind of look at your character from different angles as you can all the time so again i'm going to spline this guy again just to kind of smooth things out i've still got my interpolation in my project settings set to uh linear so when i set new keys they're going to get set as spline i could i could change that but i'm going to leave it for the moment because i'm going to be adding more linear keys later to the main mover so i don't really mind having to spline or kind of polish a couple of these here and there it kind of gives you a look at the workflow as well of kind of polishing these curves again you can see when i spline that one that one really over did a big overshoot there generally you don't want too much of that because it's kind of uh, it's the computer kind of dictating the animation more than than what you put in there so that's looking a bit more sensible again now <laughs> So, you know, I'm not going to polish this to where it's completely perfect. To, to be quite honest, I don't think there is a perfect walk. But I think that's looking pretty decent. But I'm going to show you just a little trick that I use sometimes for, for, for fixing knee pop. Um, I'm going to switch off auto key for a minute so that I can kind of play with this um, file without breaking things. If you notice, this is the thing that happens a lot with IK. And I'll be discussing this again when we look at uh, animating the arms. Obviously, this guy doesn't have any arms, so we're going to be animating another character with arms. When I kind of... You'll see, you'll notice there as I pull the leg forward, it kind of snaps. The knee will kind of snap straight. What I do sometimes to fix that is I actually use the scaling on the leg or squash and stretch on the leg. You'll see there that it kind of, what, what gives a pop really is a sudden change from one pose to another. You can see there, it's kind of obvious on the, I'm going to play it, scrub it slowly so you can see with the screen capture. But there's a, there's a really big change of pose there from that frame one to frame two. And then it kind of, there's less of a change in frame three. You can actually see this more by going to a, a side view. If I just put a dot again, say, if I just do it, say, put a little mark here. You know, you can see this kind of, this is where the leg is, or the knee is, in this pose. And then frame one, it, frame two, it really jumps forward, and then frame three there's not such a big difference so you kind of get this sudden pop and then less of a change and then it kind of starts getting smooth again so what i do to fix that is i actually uh, use this attribute on the, on the foot controller this squash one this is one i actually added the original rig didn't have that so i'm going to go back to auto key and what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave my mark there i'm going to go to the frame three which i know this looks pretty good i'm going to change my color so it's kind of obvious which one to switch it should be obvious anyway, but just to give you an idea. So that's frame three. And I'm going to keyframe this squash parameter there on zero. I've keyframed it on zero on frame one. And the problem is now, you see, if you, you can see quite clearly now, that what I've, you, these kind of marks I'm making are showing me the spacing. And they're showing me that the spacing is really wide between these two keys. And then there's, there's not much of a change. So it's kind of like, it's almost like it's hitting something solid here. It's like there's like a, a wall here. It's hitting that and stopping. So... A way to fix that, there are, there are different ways to fix it. But what I'm going to do is, uh, actually one thing before I do this, I should actually flatten the foot down as well. That's one other thing that, that I often do in the polishing stage. I've got the down pose on frame 4, which is where the foot is flattened down. But that's actually quite a long time to take to come down. You know, when, when, when there's gravity affecting us, our foot's actually going to flatten the ground probably quicker than that. So I'm going to actually have a flat on frame 3. So on frame, frame 3 here, I'm going to flatten out the heel lift. And uh, I just did that now so that if it did change the spacing, it actually hasn't really changed the spacing too much, but it's not a bad thing to do. I'll do the same thing on this foot as well. So frame 13, it's contacting, and frame 15, 
I think it should be flat, so I'm going to select this one. There we go. And we got the same issue of popping there. So I'm going to fix the popping on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that the spacing is more even. You can see now it's kind of like really wide gap and then not much of a change, a little bit of a change and then smoothing out of that. So it's really just frame two I want to fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale the leg on frame two. I'm going to use a squat attribute to bring it back a little bit. So I'm kind of looking at this little, uh, you know, the little pointy bits. And now you can see that it's a much more smooth kind of transition. So now I'm getting this pop. It's much less of a pop. You know, to get it, it's, it the, the transition is kind of even. So I've got this, you know, if I draw another line, I'll pick another color here. And I've got this sort of mark here. So this is a lot um, smoother. And I've got like, like that. I'm going to do the same on the other foot. So I've got the, the knee, or the knee is straight here on frame 13. Actually, looking at this one, I'm going to pull that up a little bit so that it's not locking out quite so much. Something like that. You can see a huge change there between these two keys. So again, I'm going to put a key on frame 15 with this at zero. Go back to frame 14, and then I'm going to scale it a little bit so it's back to that. So I've got this much smoother transition now into that that kind of thing. So you might say, well, that's kind of weird. You know, our legs don't actually get longer and shorter in real life. But you find that you know, this really won't be noticeable if you do it in a subtle sort of way. Sometimes you'll get it on the back end of the, of the stride as well. I'm just going to have a look at that. I'm just going to just get rid of those marks. So it's actually not too bad there. But you can do the same sort of thing if you, if you do find that you have trouble there. Yeah, actually you can see it there. If you look at this, this back leg here, if I zoom in a little bit, the knee is kind of... There's kind of a big spacing difference from there to there. So what I might do is just kind of keyframe the squash on this foot, on this pose. I think on this one as well. Again, I'm going to just make a little mark just so, so I can kind of keep track of what's happening. So I'm kind of doing the same thing here. I'm going to try and fix the spacing. So you can see it's a kind of a, it kind of stays in the same place and then it pops back and then it pops forward. You get this kind of juddery sort of motion with the, with, the, with the knee. You can kind of see it there, kind of jumping around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to keyframe it here and then here as well. It's actually already key, key there. And then this frame I'm going to stretch it a little bit or squash it a little bit so that I get a smoother transition. So now the knee is, you know, it's starting here. And then on frame 14, it's kind of coming down, you know, kind of a halfway point roughly. And then here, and then back again. So it's still going to be a little bit of movement there, but it's a little bit smoother. I was going to do the same with the other knee. Actually, I still think I could get a little bit cleaner looking at it there. It's kind of quite straight here. Let's have a look if I zoom out a bit. Yeah, what I'm going to do is actually soften it there. The, the difference between those two poses. Between the straight leg and then the, this one. So I'm actually going to bring this, I'm actually going to push that a little bit more so it kind of stays a bit straighter. And then maybe even a little bit here as well. So that's a little bit smoother, yeah. I think that's a bit closer to what I want. You can really spend a lot of time on this stuff, kind of finessing it. It's the kind of the last stage of the animation, really, when you're, when you've got everything pretty much done, you kind of spend the time on cleaning this stuff up. It it is quite time consuming, and you might end up with a lot of keyframes here. But I actually, look at that that squash attribute here. Uh, it's here. You can see I'm actually adding a lot of keys to that. But that's okay. You know, sometimes you need to add a lot of keys to get get what you want, and you know that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, really, what you're doing is you're controlling the animation. You're kind of taking it away from the uh, the computer's control. The other thing you can do as well is kind of adjust the uh, the actual ball lift or the toe lift. That'll that'll tweak it a little bit as well. So I usually kind of go back and forth with those a little bit. So so my my key a little bit more there. I'm still looking at this. Actually, I'm gonna grab this and move around. 
Yeah, I'm gonna mark this one. Yeah, so that's the frame that's bugging me. I'm gonna grab this one. Fix it a little bit. So I've got this, this, this. Yeah, now, now it should be looking smoother. There we go. Now we're not getting that judder on that knee. So you can see there's a bit of working back and forward sometimes to get what you want. But I find this squash attribute, if, you're, if your rig doesn't have that, you can you know, use the ball lift and stuff like that to get this, or you can adjust the up and down the body. But I find that this little cheat works great. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. So now I'm going to do the same with the other knee. And uh, if that went a bit quick, hopefully if you watch this one again, it'll, uh, it'll help clarify a little bit. So again, I'm kind of looking at basically what they call a spacing. Yeah, you can see the space in there is huge. This one's really jumping from here to to here, basically, in, in one frame, which is too much. And then it's not really moving at all between the ne in the next one. So I'm going to keyframe the squash here. I'm going to press Control and click on that. And then this frame is already keyed, so this one I just need to adjust it so that it kind of eases out of that pose. So that's much more of a gradual progression. And then it's kind of coming back here. And kind of look at the space and there you can see it's coming down, coming down, and then back. So you can, if I play it there at full speed, you see that one judders while the other one's nice and smooth. So, I'm going to keep finessing that. So, again, I might bring the ball lift up a tiny bit just to kind of finesse that. I have to make sure I, I do that same change on frame 25 so again i'm going to all click and just record a key there so i've got that exact same pose otherwise the the walk will look uneven and so i might bring that back a little bit there and maybe even a little bit here as well that's looking much better now still a little bit of judder there i still think i could probably Finesse that a little bit more by, by kind of straightening it out a little bit. So I'm kind of getting more of a gradual coming out of that pose into this one, back to this one, and then maybe bring it up like this again. So again, it's not coming out of that straight pose too hard. And then here I want it to be zero again. Yeah, that's not too bad. Again, I could mirror the poses, um, but that's looking pretty decent. It's not perfect, you know, you, I can really spend ages finessing this, and sometimes you do, you know, depending on the, the needs of the animation, depending on how close up the needs are going to be seen. But you see that looks a lot cleaner now than it did. If I was being really fussy, I think the uh, left knee is a little bit better than the right one. You know, like, you can actually go into the graph editor as well, or the curves, and, you know, copy the values to make sure you've got exactly the same thing. But often I'll do this by eye, because I think it's a good thing to do as well. You're trying to, you know, as an animator, you're really, what you're trying to do is develop your eye. So that's, I'm going to say that's pretty much getting there now. It's kind of nice and clean. So the only thing we want to do next, really, um, I'm going to move on in the next video to, to uh, actually a character with arms and, and a torso as well, so we can kind of see how that works. But for this one, I'm going to call this pretty much done. The only thing, though, um, that we haven't looked at yet is actually moving the character forward in space. So if I add some more keys, if I, I've i already looped all the animations so that if I um, you know, just press play there, you'll see it'll keep looping away. Um, there's a bit of a jump there at the end when it... Uh, when, it's, when it comes around, I'm just going to add some more keys so we don't even see that. So you can see how uh, it's just looping for infinity. Or for however many loops I set up, I think it was 111. <laughs> yeah, so that's not too bad there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually set it up so that this controller is moving forward in space. So I haven't actually added any keys to this yet. And all I need to really is add a key on the Z. Child's so going to add a key here for Z. I'm just going to control click just that one. And then I'm going to go to frame 25. And I'm just going to add another key. And I'm going to do this in the curves again. If I pick the main mover and position Z. What I like to do, and you can do this with sort of, but you can use math to do this really. You, know, you can figure out the stride length and, you know, multiply it by two and use that to work out how far this should move. But 
I tend to just do this stuff by eye. And what I tend, what I'll do is though is I lock the time of that key because when I'm when I'm adjusting this, I don't want it to be kind of sliding around. If you don't have that locked, I just start moving it. It'll it'll shift around this way, which which is kind of a nuisance. So so I like to just kind of lock it so that I can't change the time or lock the time so I can't change it. And then I'll just kind of start dragging it down. And you'll see as I drag it down, the controller moves forward. And I'll zoom out a little bit. And uh, basically, what I'll start doing then is I'll start scrubbing the animation and I'll look. And I can see there, by the fact that the, f the f feet are sliding back, that I need to increase the amount of forward movement of. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the forward movement of this to be the same as the backwards movement of the feet. As I say, I could do that with, you know, I could get a calculator and work out the stride length, but I like to do it just by eye. So I'm just going to keep increasing that and then kind of scrubbing and seeing. And again, the feet are still sliding back. So now it's so I need to increase this. So make it more like that. So now you can see I'm actually getting closer there. That's not too bad now. And what I'll do now is I'll kind of zoom in a little bit. I might even get into a side view again. And um what I like to do is sometimes again use that little drawing tool. Just put down a little mark maybe on this and just kind of see if that's moving. And uh oh, it's actually not. It is actually a tiny bit there. Just to show you if I go too far you'll get the opposite effect where the feet will uh you know where the feet will seem to be kind of moonwalking or or sliding. So I'm gonna undo that. But I'm pretty close to the value there. They're still sliding back a tiny bit, so what I need to do is just, uh, just finesse this. I can actually zoom in on this a little bit as well, just to kind of really get the value I want. So basically what I want to do is just make sure that that stays on that mark. Something like that. There we go. That's I'm going to call that done. It might not be 100%. You can actually see it's moving forward a tiny bit, so I can decrease it a little bit like that. Let's keep it on the dot. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty much invisible when we look at it in the viewport. And uh, the sliding should be pretty much gone now. So there we go. So we just got one obvious problem now. You keep starting from the same place. So all the other curves. I said, well, I am. Um, this this selection actually doesn't select the main mover. It just it just selects the, uh, the the body and the two feet controls. And earlier I set these. If you look at the, if I go to right right click on them, and this before I set it to repeat before and the other one ap repeat after. But the the body or the the main mover rather, the position Z curve. I want that to be offset repeat after. And you can see actually if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see what the curve looks like at the moment. It just kind of goes, you know, linear like this, and then stops. But if I switch it to after offset repeat after, you can see what happens. It it continues on in the same direction. So it's going to basically add on the value to each repeat re, uh, repetition. So again, I'm going to turn up the repetition and give them 111 like I did the other ones, just because the one key is kind of handy to get to. And um, now, if I increase the play range now, and press play. There's our character walking forward with pretty much no uh, foot slip and fairly minimal uh, knee pop. That's probably still a little bit there, you know. Again, you can really finesse this stuff. Uh, it's really just a matter of taking the time and kind of really looking closely at it. But I'm going to call this one pretty much done, and we're going to move on in the next video to um, animating a full character. But I really recommend if if you've watched this far, you know, grab this character and try and. Um, you know, block in the main poses like we did in the previous video, and um, and then you know try and finesse them in the curves. Take your time with it. It is kind of there's a bit of science and a bit of art, and it's all sort of mixed together. So it does take a while. You know, one thing that I should say as well is that you know a walk is quite difficult to animate. It does take a while, and even you know I've been doing this for quite a while, and I made lots of different characters walking. I still it still takes me a while. You can see I've been an hour pretty much polishing this section of the animation. Um, obviously, I would be quicker if I wasn't describing what I was doing, but. But you know, it does take time. Animation is one of those things that just does take time. Um, but it's really fun when you get when you start seeing stuff moving around. So I just recommend you know you just take take your time. You know, just just really play around with it until you get the results you want. You know, and don't be afraid to to experiment as well. You know, you can always save a new version or revert to save if, if things kind of get too messed up. I I tend to use save incremental a lot. I haven't really done it too much while I'm recording here, but. Generally, when, I, when I'm working on an animation, if I've got something that's reasonably decent, I'll save and then save incremental and then start fiddling with the new version. And then if I know if I start getting somewhere that's not working, I can just go back to the previous one.
So I'm going to call that done for this section of it, and I'm going to move on then to a, a full character uh, with arms and head and all the rest of it, and we're going to look at how you approach animating those.